we Mr. Muhammad Abdullahi Datio. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, it's uh, that you is not a senator. Uh, he's not a senator. He's not a senator. Is he a senator? He's not a senator. Uh, there are many people. There are many people running around. <laughs> Your Excellency. The President of the Senate, Your Excellency, the Deputy Senate President, Excellencies, distinguished leaders of the Senate, distinguished senators, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. With gratitude to Almighty Allah, my name is Muhammad Sani Abdullahi. Born 26th October 1979 in Kaduna State. I stand before this hallowed chambers profoundly honored and deeply grateful for the privilege to speak in the presence of distinguished members of this Senate, the vanguard of our nation's democracy. With utmost humility, and an unwavering sense of duty, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for the nomination for the position of Deputy Governor at the Central Bank of Nigeria. I owe immense gratitude to our revered father, leader, and statesman, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, for his unwavering trust and confidence in presenting my name for this pivotal role. His visionary leadership and steadfast commitment to the prosperity of Nigeria have been a wellspring of inspiration for us all. Should I be confirmed, I pledge to support the governor of the bank and my colleagues to uphold the highest standards and principles as deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Your Excellency, distinguished senators, I'd like to provide a very brief overview of my educational background and experience. My early years in primary and secondary school were spent in Kaduna State, in essence, international school. I completed a bachelor's degree in economics at Amadebello University, Zaria. I proceeded to also complete a Master's in International Affairs and Diplomacy in ABU Zaria. Subsequently, I completed a Master's degree in Development Economics and Policy at the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom. I am currently rounding up a PhD in Henley Business School at the University of Reading. I have two decades of experience in development policy formulation, public finance, and project implementation. I have had a career spanning the private sector, public sector, and international development. My initial specialization was in credit during my tenure at Ecobank Nigeria, providing me with the foundational skills and experience in finance, risk assessment, and regulatory compliance. Subsequently, as a development economics economist, I have served as a member of the World Bank Expert Advisory Council, policy advisor at the office, executive office of the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in New York. These roles have allowed me to contribute to global development initiatives and gain valuable insight into the complexities of economic policy at an international level. In Kaduna State, I served as the Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, followed by the position of Chief of Staff to the State Governor for over seven years. In these capacities, I played a role in designing, coordinating, and implementing government policies across all sectors. I had the opportunity 
to lead the Infrastructure Council, overseeing the largest infrastructure expansion in the history of the state and coordinating the portfolio of economic and social infrastructure across 23 local governments. During my time as Commissioner Budget, we formulated economic policies, designed the state fiscal strategy, and coordinated the implementation and monitoring of the state budget. During that time, we also designed the state development plan, established our economic intelligence unit, strengthened data and statistics capabilities, created an infrastructure master plan, industrial policy, and a plan to accelerate achievement of the SDGs. Through my career, I have held several positions of senior economist and economic advisor in the presidency and in the Nigeria Governors Forum, respectively. These roles have allowed me to contribute to shaping economic policy at the national and local level and aligning our objectives with global development priorities. In conclusion, my diverse experience in development policy, banking, and project implementation have equipped me with the necessary skills and insights to contribute effectively as the Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, if confirmed. I firmly believe that with the dedicated leadership, the unwavering support of the National Assembly, strategic planning, and the resilience of our people, that we can overcome the challenges we face as a nation and achieve robust growth and stability. Once again, I thank you, Your Excellency, and distinguished senators for considering my nomination and humbly seek your support and valuable guidance as we embark for your time and consideration. The distinguished um, colleagues, and Mr. President, um, distinguished senators, uh, to take a few of the questions before he wraps up. Uh, thank you very much, uh, distinguished uh, senators, for the depth questions that we've received. Many of the questions that have been asked today are also the questions that we have discussed in the early days of this event, and these are questions that we are also still, many of them, considering. So it is very clear, as um, His Excellency the President has said, that we will not have all the answers today. What I will just um, mention are very quickly six things, which I believe cover a few of the questions, and then if I miss any, um, I believe the governor or my colleagues will um, remind me. The first major issue that we have continued to discuss under the leadership of the governor is regarding of returning the bank to its core mandate. And this is as dictated by the act of the Central Bank of Nigeria. So we have recognized that the bank has strayed significantly over the last few years, and there's a huge um, desire to return the bank to its core mandate as a central bank. The second, which I have here, which is also coincidentally what the President just finished mentioning, is the importance of depoliticizing the central bank. There has been a significant amount of anecdotal information that has been shared here today. I will not go into it, but this is a core focus of the new team, if confirmed. The third, as the Governor has repeatedly said to us, is the importance of communication and feedback transparent communication, especially with this Hello Chamber and the National Assembly in its entirety. So Mr. President and distinguished senators, if confirmed, what you will see from this team is significant amount of communication and open and transparent relations between us and the entirety of Nigerians. The fifth, because I've added the National Assembly to the, to the fourth, is the importance of evidence-based policies and the sanctity of data. Over the last of weeks, we have seen a lot of information come out regarding the operations of the central bank. Some of this information is correct, wrong. So it is 
that before we delve into talking about details, that we actually verify the data that we are going to be working with. So working on this has a lot to do with some of the questions, for example, regarding the financial statements of the bank itself. These are issues that we have to look into if confirmed. The sixth is the importance, very critical importance, of the collaboration between the fiscal side and the monetary side. This is overriding a lot of issues, including around rate management, and all of the issues that concern the mandate of the central bank. The seventh and most important, I think, for the team is the recognition that this is not going to be easy work, that there's going to need to be a lot of hard work and that the team is willing and ready to work with key stakeholders, particularly the National Assembly, to ensure that we restore the dignity of the central bank. I will touch on two of the detailed questions I asked, and then I will yield the floor back to the governor. The first regarding the issue of monopoly asked by distinguished Senator Wadada. I think that in very close collaboration with the fiscal side of the House, particularly the Ministry of Finance, there is a target that the government has set for itself of 7% growth rate. Distinguished Senator Ahmed Lawan has mentioned that in the past, this growth has not been inclusive. I think that it's very critical that in terms of that collaboration, that this growth doesn't just create one or two more languages or $10, as you mentioned, but plenty and in an inclusive manner. So 7% growth rate will allow us over a 10-year period, 8-year period, to double the economy based on the mathematical rule of 7. On the informal sector, I think this is a very, very important conversation. And in fact, if you look at the size of the economy, many, many experts believe that the economy is grossly understated because we are not really considering the size, structure, function of the informal economy. So we need to look at this very closely, together with other actors, the National Bureau of Statistics, and other players in the economy to ensure that what we're doing is, as much as possible, going to be widespread um, to most Nigerians. Thank you very much. I'll yield the floor, Mr. Governor. Will the Senate confirm Commissioner Mohamed Abdullahi Datijo for appointment as Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. And those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Mohamed Abdul Datijo is hereby confirmed as Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria.